Welcome back to the Intelligent Conversations podcast. Today, I have the honor to learn from John C. Morley. John is a serial entrepreneur, CEO, podcast host, and engineer. John is the founder of J. Moore Connection and loves new technology. John seeks to help people that struggle with technology and implement it into their lives. So, John, thank you for coming on today. I it's a pleasure, you. Josh, to be here. Yeah, no, I appreciate you taking the time to come on. I'm, I'm really excited to learn. Uh, from you and I'm the people tuning in right now, I think, are as well. But I want to open up with this. And you've done a lot of things. And, you know, as I was researching about you, my question is, is what came first? Like, what was your starting point? Where did you kind of start? Was it the engineer? Was it the podcast host? Was it entrepreneurship? What kind of came So first? I went to school, right? And uh, when I was in, um, I think it was my junior year. Uh, actually, no, it was my sophomore year. I had decided... I guess I was starting that that kind of entrepreneurial bit of me, and it wasn't to make money, but so my school was basically they had Southern New England Telephone when I got there in in um, my freshman year. The sophomore year, the school decided they were going to open up their own kind of business and charge people. That's when they were charging people for phone calls. Now nobody pays for phone calls anymore. Oh, Everything's wow. free. That was like way back, <laughs> and uh, they charged for message units and all these crazy things, and you would be paying more money to call somebody that was local long distance than long distance, which was like nuts. And so um, our school had this thing where, you know, you got your phone number through the school and they had their own, they call it a PBX, a private branch exchange. And so what that basically meant is that our, let's say our number 768 was owned by the whole university. So they controlled all the numbers under Mm -hmm. that, uh, let's say the four, you know, you could have four, basically um, uh, digits, which would be like zero, zero, um, seven point zero, zero. Usually numbers will start out with like, um, you know, like a one or something. You don't usually have a zero, but usually it starts like a one. So you could have those four digits changing. There were a lot of numbers. So I remember when I was there, got signed up for the plan. The plan wasn't cheap. You had to pay for it. Hmm. And so while orientation was happening, uh, I met the head guy who was running and I said, I'd like voicemail. He said, well, voicemail will be an extra X per month. Oh, wow. And my parents are like, you know, we're not paying for that. I'm like, uh-huh. And I was like, well, I'll pay for it. Like, well, you don't have any money to pay for anything. Right. <laughs> so I decided to be a little bit entrepreneurial. And I uh, got my phone line. The next day I went back and I said, Eric, I said, uh, you remember me? I was the gentleman. You remember I didn't want to pay for voicemail. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I have a proposition for you. How would you like to have a student that would be an intern for you, could help run the telecommunication program, could give you valuable feedback, advice, and tips to help improve the program, starting with getting a free voicemail account? What do you say? Wow. And he's like, so you want a free voicemail account? I said, yeah. I said, but it's going to be a lot more than that. Like, I'm going to be able to be part of your team. And so the free voicemail account, he did that one, two, three. But the other stuff... He had to go talk with the president, and he's like, I don't know if this is going to fly. He says, you know, like you having access to everybody's phone number, and I could barge into any phone call. I could transfer my phone anywhere on premise. I mean, I had, let's say, the taboo things that students just shouldn't have access to. And so that got me, you know, into the spirit of this. And so when I became a junior, I decided to start – a tech company. I was already a a major in in the science and engineering. And I decided to start a small little company on campus called JCM and Son. Um, Basically was was going to be the name, but I didn't know the name yet. So I just called it JCM Tech. And so I said, look, it's going to be really simple. If I come on premise to help you, um, it's going to be, I think it was $20. And if I helped you by phone, it was $10. People are like, well, that's not much. You mean per hour? I'm like, no, no, per incident. So if I come out to you to help you solve a problem, it's only 20 bucks. So uh-huh. one kid calls me. I get my first, let's call it sale, quote unquote. And <laughs> it was a useless thing. He, I came out there and I'll just call him Mark. That's not his name. But he goes, hey, Johnny. So what do you charge? I said, I charge 20. Oh, 20 an hour? No, $20. Do you nice. take Visa, Master, Discover, or check? I said, no, dude, 20 bucks, like cash. Oh, all right. I got to see when I can. I got to try to get it. Just 20 bucks, like just 20 bucks. Wow. 
whether I'm here an hour or four hours, he's like, I said, whatever it takes to solve the problem. I said, what's the problem? And I'm coming over there at like nine or 10 o'clock at night. He thinks this is something really quick I'm going to solve. It's a Thursday night. We both have class early the next morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says to me, uh, you think you can fix it? I said, I don't know what the problem is. He says, well, I'm trying to play this game. I think it was either a Dungeons and Dragons or some game. And it was a game that ran in Windows. It was kind of like a hybrid. So it wasn't a true fully okay. Windows game. It had like DOS components. So back then... We only had 640K conventional memory. That's all we had. We couldn't get any more. Yeah. And the program wow. couldn't run extended memory. Now, you know that's not much. So, the, so I had to, in those days, optimize the computer to run properly. Every time he ran the program, it would crash. He would start the program. The sound would just kind of like, you know, like they would do things. The screen would do weird things. So I looked at it. And I said, you know, it's, it's a little late tonight. Um, I'll come back uh, tomorrow or Saturday. We both have school tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Uh, you know, why don't I get back to you? So I come back to him, I think it was 10 o'clock on Saturday morning because he was still sleeping. Got there 10 o'clock in the morning. Started working on it. 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to 1. He's like, can I get you something? I'm like, I'm good. He's like, I'll pop a pizza in the yard. I said, okay, that's great. Pizza's fine. Pizza and soda, whatever. So we had that. I'm working on this. About three hours when we go back, he, I said, I think we're all good. He's like... We're all good. I said, yeah, I give it a try. So he goes, he starts the game, and he starts playing a few levels. I said, I think we're good. He says, no, 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 not so fast. He said, it always works on the first couple levels. I said, well, how many levels is it before it crashes? Well, that depends. It could be 10, could be 12. I said, Jeez. what is the most it's gone? He says, I've gone up to like 14, so I probably have to go that high to see if it crashes. He said, why don't you have your pizza? So I'm sitting back having my pizza. And at that time, I was drinking soda. And I've been off soda for about 30 years, but that's a whole other story. And so I was eating my pizza. I think it was like Elio's at the time and, and uh, having my soda. And he's playing. And I said, we're up to like level 10. Mm -hmm. He's like, we're not up to 12 yet. I'm like, all right. <laughs> having a slice of pizza, we're up to 14. So we're at the 14. He's like, yeah, he's like, let's go to 15. I'm like, seriously? Hmm. Yeah, seriously. So we get to 15. I said, we're at 15. He's like, I didn't clear 15 yet. <laughs> Trying to be very patient here. Yeah. And we clear 15. And all of a sudden, I said, we cleared it. He's like, yeah. He's like, it works. He's like, how'd you do it? I said, I had to reorganize all the memory. Not that you probably care. But I had to basically reallocate the different drivers, like the memory drivers, the memory driver, the mouse driver, the sound driver. So they all loaded in contiguous memory, huh? Well, basically, I had to make sure that they were all kind of tight together and they weren't wasting space. Oh, whatever. Uh, listen, I have another game. Okay, well, not today. It's like, I have another game. Maybe I can have you come over and fix it. What would you charge? I said, another 20 bucks. I said, another game. Yeah, it's another. I said, oh, boy. <laughs> so at first when I had came over and I didn't fix it the first day, he's like, I'll tell you what, he's like, I'll give you the 20 bucks. I said, I don't want the 20 bucks until I fixed your problem. And then teachers started calling me. I remember uh, my professor who was a doctor who was really tough on me. And um, he had a problem with his computer. This is a guy that's supposed to know everything, right? And so yeah. <laughs> uh, he's the kind of person in class, if you ask a question, it's like, were you not paying attention? I was oh, just like, could you repeat that section? I'll repeat it for you, but please, uh, Mr. Morley, make sure you pay attention next time. I don't want to be wasting the class valuable time. I said, well, I think the rest of the class wants you to go over it too. Well, how come they didn't raise their hand? I think they might be a little fearful. <laughs> anyway, so we'll go through the whole thing. So he goes through things. No. So one day he calls me to have uh, assistance for his computer. And uh, I help him and... Uh, I said, oh, this is great. He says, do me a favor. He says, uh, he says uh, you didn't help me. I didn't help you. No, 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 no. You helped me, but no one else knows you helped me, and let's keep it that way. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, whatever. So we're in class the next week, and I was having trouble with one of the concepts. And I said, Professor, uh, could you repeat that? He's like, uh, Mr. Morley, I'm not going to go and repeat that. I've already repeated things for you three times in the last month. And I said, yeah, professor. I said, um, you know, repeating and help, they're funny things, aren't they? I said, uh, <laughs> it'd be a shame yeah. if certain help was revealed when other people didn't want to know about that. And uh, maybe others would like, it's like, 
And he says, all right, I'll go over. He's like, just put your hand out. And he knew where I was going. And he repeated the whole thing. He's like, how did you get me to do that? I said, I said, that's a secret. He says, how did you get him to repeat it? Because he was not. I said, let's just say I have a card on him. You have a card on him? I have a card on him. And that card, I have to tell you, is one that I can hold all the way through to my graduation. I said, after I graduate, I'll tell you what it was. And he's retired. I said, well, remember when I was a telecom person? He said, yeah. Well, I helped him with his phones. I helped him with his computer. And whenever he had problems, he would call me. He'd pay me $20 an incident. Yeah. And I remember one time, you know, I was always trying to help people at school. And so they had something called a computer lab at the time. And we had something called a VAX and we called it a VMS. So like there was no color screens. WordPerfect was like our most advanced program. And we're using IBM PCs <sighs> oh, and Macs and laser printers that printed like an Apple II or Apple III laser color was like a treat for us. And uh, I remember one of the UAs, I mean, they were nice, but they didn't have a clue. And uh, they uh, basically saw me in the lab. Someone was having a problem. I said, can I give the student your number? Like, because they're having a problem. I said, aren't you supposed to be helping them? Well, I am, but like you, you're smart. Like, you know all this stuff. I said, yes. I said, well, can I give me your number? I said, okay. So I guess he thought that that was okay, and other UAs thought that was okay, that everyone could be given my number. Like I said, that one student could get my number. Yeah. So the next week, I'm getting all these phone calls from people at, at my dorm, and I'm like, this is nuts. I, like, I have to study. And so I go down to uh, telecom, and I ask Eric. I said, Eric, I need to build something. Can I build something for myself? He's like, yeah, whatever you want to do. So... I built something, but I needed extra permission, which he hadn't given me. I said, I need, like, total access to the system. I said, I'm not going to do anything wrong with it. I said, I just need access for something because I'm building, like, a smoke and mirrors kind of thing. He's like, what are you building? He says, I don't care. He says, just put the darn thing back the way it is before you graduate because we <laughs> do not want to deal with this. So my phone number, let's just say, was um, – I'm just going to make this up. Let's say my phone number was 9662. Or, or I think it was uh, – yeah, let's say it was 4662. So that was my phone number that the outside world knew. I picked a number that was outside of what the outside number would know, which was, I think, 9051. We only had up to 8999. Everything else didn't belong to the university, but we could use them internally. So I decided yeah. to create a um, voicemail box and a little bit of a tree. So what would happen is you would dial my main number – which would be going to a voicemail control box, say, hi, uh, this is John. Um, um, please wait. Uh, if I'm available, your call will be transferred. Otherwise, you'll be directed immediately to voicemail. Pretty simple. Yeah. And um, you need to have a code to get through to my real phone number. So my friends got a four-digit code. If I didn't want them to call me anymore, I removed their code. And so what happened is, now you think this is pretty simple because, like, oh, well, gee, I could just call him anytime because once I figure out his number, because it forwarded somewhere. Now, if I called you, even the teachers would see my number, 9061 or whatever the number. I had like 20 different numbers. They rotated. So the professor, this one guy, he called me, the same doctor. He called me up and uh, he gets, he dials the number. He's like, we're sorry. This is you. This is not a supported extension. For assistance using the oh. communication system, please dial such and such. So he calls the telecommunication department saying, what's going on? I'm trying to reach John. I'm dialing this number. We said, well, that's not his phone number. Well, that's the number it showed up on the ID. Right. But his number is this, 4662. It is, but that so – don't ask. Every day his number changes. And so if people didn't go through the number I gave them, they would just get a message like they couldn't connect me. Now, here's the cool part. When I wanted to get everybody's phone calls, I told the system to send my call through, regardless of whether they put a pin in or not. If I didn't want that, it only worked if they put the pin in. So they would be directed to my real number or they'd get voicemail, depending on whether I wanted calls or not. Now, what was really cool was I could forward my phone anywhere on premise. You can imagine how dangerous that was. So I could forward my phone anywhere without being at my phone. So students could do like yeah. a pound nine and where they were going if they were going to a friend's room. I could forward it to your room even if you weren't there. You probably didn't even know that I did it. And so now I'm at student association and my phone's forwarding to my desk. 
and people could not understand it. So the head person, Eric, who worked for Rome at the time, was kind of like, kind of defunct the company now. And so yeah. he basically named my project Morley Smoke and Mirrors. So that gave me, let's say, the wherewithal and the passion to say, hey, you know what? I'm pretty good at what I do. Maybe I should start a company. When I graduated, my dad says, you have a choice. You can get some money from me and you can go get a job. I'll give you some more money and you won't just get the one week. You'll get to take a whole month off. But when you come back, you'll have to build a whole business. Okay. Oh, I went wow. off to Disney World. I got the money from him. And it wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. And um, I hired this marketing and advertising company before I even graduated. And, Josh, they ripped me off. I'm not going to give their name for respect. Unfortunately, uh -huh. they're still in business. And they're still ripping people off every single day. And so the, re the way you know you're with the wrong company is when they charge you based on the deposit you give them. I'll give you a quick example. I'm going to use some arbitrary amounts, $100, $250, $1,000. $1, if I gave them a deposit for $100, they would bring donuts and bagels and we'd have a short meeting. If I gave them $250, they would take me to Bennigan's for cake and ice cream. If I gave them $1,000, they would take us to Ruth Chris. Now, real quickly, uh, I decided to test this out. So I'll call the lady Belinda. And um, so I call Belinda. I say, Belinda, I'm sending you 100 bucks. Okay, Mr. Murray, no problem. We'll arrange a, yeah, I said, a, a donuts and bagels. She said, yeah, yeah, that's right. So the next day, Belinda calls me back. Hi, um, this is Belinda from Brian March. Yeah, he's off. I said, hi, how are you? Listen, I don't know if you know about this, but Brian and Katie, they're married. I'm like, okay. Uh, and they have twins. Okay. And I don't know if you know this, but I, the Katie got in a fender bender last week. I'm still like trying to be polite and understand. Mm -hmm. And so she doesn't have a car. And the twins right now, uh, they had twins. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tommy and Mark. Okay. And they're both teething right now. Okay. And they have an appointment for 830, the exact same time your meeting is for tomorrow. And Brian needs to come home because of the fender bender to take them both and her to the doctor. Okay, uh, how about we just do lunch? Well, we can't do lunch because Brian's boss is flying in uh, last minute unannounced. All right, let's just pick another day. Yeah. No, no worries. I've got you booked at the last appointment at 1030 at Ruth Chris. And this happened regardless how I did this. They didn't know what they were doing. They couldn't even print their way, Josh, out of a paper bag. So I decided the first thing that they do wrong is they lie, they cheat, and they steal. Okay? Instead of, let's say, uh, under-promising and over-deliver, they over-promise and under-deliver. That's something you shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And so I said, they can't even print. They send the bloody print out to a company. At, they, they, they say that they're a marketing, advertising, and printing company. I said, this company's a joke. And so about 14, 50 years ago, I said I had enough. I went to Xerox, who we we're already a client of, mm -hmm. and I said, how do I become a mom-pop print shop? They said, John, it's real simple. 150. I reach in my pocket. I give them 150. He says, no, 150,000. Oh, Long story short, we wind up getting the machine, and I used my first entrepreneurial move because when we came back, I said to the guys, hey, I am totally embarrassed. My credit wasn't as good as I thought. Did you get approved? I said, I got approved, but I only got 130000 Oh. I said, so listen, what do I owe you for like the breakfast yesterday and, and uh, the dinner? I just want to pay you back because mm -hmm. obviously I can't afford the machine. I knew what I was doing. So he goes scurrying off to his boss in the corner room doing all these hand gestures, coming running right out to me. He goes, you are in luck. How am I in luck? I'm 20,000 short. Well, you see, that machine and anything better than that machine starting on Monday is going on sale. We have a $20,000 on paper rebate. And not only that, you're going to get 40 hours of free training. It doesn't start till Monday, but my boss says, I can give it to you today. And I'm just kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> I need a minute. I might need a night or two to, to, uh, to think about this. Well, less than a while. Tomorrow is Saturday, Sunday. Give me till Monday. So I come back on Monday. I said, let's do it. I get the training. I then go into this office that I've been using for years. I knock on their door. I say hello to the head person. And he says, hey, John, how are you? Listen, we had a great run, guys. And we're done. 
listen, uh, can you give me a minute? You know, I'm just waking up. I'm still getting my coffee. Let me get Brian, your sales rep, in here because, you know, I'm not really awake. He gets Brian in here. Hey, John, how you been? Listen, we've been spending all night, myself, Sarah, Tim, Brian, Kevin, uh-huh, on um, putting together a multi-million dollar advertising campaign that's going to knock your socks off. It's going to bring so much money in, you're not going to know what to do with it. Would you like to see it? And I'm assuming you did it. No. No. I said, maybe you're not getting what I've been trying to tell you here. I just fired your boss. I'm firing you. I'm firing your entire team. You guys are a joke. Well, I know things didn't go exactly the way you want, but listen, we'd like to work with you. We like working with you. We're going to give you a 40% rebate on any new work you do with us starting from today. And we're going to give you a 20% rebate back on any previous work. He even went back to say, I'll give you 40% on the old work. And I said, guys, no. Well, let's just get your coat. Let's go to the diner. Let's, let's just hash this out with some food. Mm -hmm. No, no, we're not doing that. Like, we are done. No, I get it. We're done with the project. No, no, we are done. Our relationship is over. I'm gone, done with you. That's below the belt. I said, no, taking my money and my father's money for years and not producing ROI, that, my friends, is below the belt. Then they learned I was starting the company. They said, oh, you can't do that. You swing with the sharks. And I started that to become the marketing arm and production center for Jaymore. I've always been passionate about video production, so got very passionate to that. Then I got into keynote speaking. I spoke for Harvard and Yale. Nice. Um, actually, I did the talk a while back in 1999, minor and major inconveniences of Y2K, but I didn't have the, let's say, the ambition to start keynote speaking. Even though I had that successful one under my belt, it kind of hit me later. And then I just became very passionate. Uh, seven years from now, past, I became a member of the International Press Association. I've written, I'd say by September 1st of this year, I've written 250,000 words. That's a lot. How do you do that? How does it take? How? Like, no, I mean, obviously, right, you, you type in uh, <laughs> things like that. But well, there, mean, is, there is a trick, Ag. There is a trick. It, it takes a lot of motivation, is, I would guess, to. Yeah, yeah. So the trick is this. Most people, you know, we sit down and we try to type something. We start, but then we get stuck, right? So I have an aspiration that a book is coming out the end of this year, early next. 25 guests information to change your life and everyone else in it. So I said, I got to get on the, on, the, on the horse and I just got to write. But sometimes, Josh, you didn't feel like writing. So, like, what do I do? Like, you know, who's nobody's going to write it for me. Hmm. So I decided to do two things. One, I decide to submit my work, my beginning work, to the International Press Association and see if I get accepted by them because they don't accept everybody. Hmm. Two, three weeks later, they got back to Mr. Morley. We are happy to let you know we reviewed your work. And it most definitely qualifies, and we'd like to welcome you aboard the International Press Association. Congratulations, you're now an official press member. I said, wow. But then sometimes I was getting stuck. So I don't know if you guys know uh, Iron Man. Yeah. Probably know the movie Iron Man? Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and you probably know uh, there is a great uh, guy uh, from Iron Man. He is the amazing, I would say, person behind, you know, the robots and all that. So I listened to uh, basically uh, his, what they call, they, they call they call it productive music. And, and that's actually what I listen to every single time that I want to write. I listen to Tony Stark's productive music. Nice. And literally, Josh, from within five seconds of putting out, last night I had to write an article. And I was like, I don't feel like writing. I put this on, it's like, 500 words are on the page in just five minutes. Before I know it, I'm at 1,200. I'm at 1,600. Wow, I'm done. Wow, that was so easy. I wonder if it sends a message to your brain. As well. It does. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, the music comes on. It's like, okay, now I'm in writing. So mode. what the music does is the music stimulates our brain and the creative forces and also causes dopamine to be released. And just enough that cause our creative juices to just naturally flow. No, I, I agree 100%. And I know that that's how it works. And uh, I, I actually do something similar. When I need to start focusing and really get in, dive into some work, then music tends to do be... Do you have a certain music you like to listen to? Uh, it depends on, I guess, kind of the state of mind I'm in beforehand. So like okay. if, it, if it's 
all over the place than kind of the more relaxing, uh, I, I don't want to say classical, but not as uh, loud music. But when I'm uh, sure, sure, when I'm not as uh, energetic, then I'll actually blast loud music. In, um, <laughs> sure, sure. So what I like to listen to, especially if you want to read a book or sometimes like so being that I have my own shows, I promise my guests that if I bring an author on, I will read their book cover to cover. I think I'm one of the only uh, guests, that, uh, hosts that do that. I promise to read books cover to cover. And there was one I had to read about, oh, about a year ago. My team had already committed me that I was going to read the book. Mm-hmm. It was about drones. I was going for Ooh. my drone life. This is going to be an easy thing. John's going to love reading about drones. Yeah, he is. However, you didn't really take note to actually read and check what the book is about. The title was, they just saw drones and just kind of like, you know, just honed in yeah. on drones. The Psychology of Killing with Drones Remotely. Was that, I'm guessing that was very boring. Well, it's a kind of conversation where I'm reading the book and they're having conversations where they have contract killers. And you come home to dinner and it's like, oh, how was your day at work? Oh, uh, it was great. Um, I killed about 12 people. Could you pass me the ketchup and the salt? <laughs> Thanks. Oh, my goodness. So, so we laugh about it, but this is how it works. And we say that it's not video games, but what they are doing is desensitizing people so they're treating it. Now, they would despise you saying it's a video game, but they're still using that same caveat to desensitize people because we're not literally right in front of each other. We're seeing a screen. So you're distanced from me. And now they're even going as farther to strip down what you look like and make you like an avatar. So, hey, I could just kill an avatar. It's only an avatar. Yeah. Uh, So I'm actually kind of curious on that. And sure, uh, it it seems like you're not you don't like uh, video games as much. You think that? No, I love video. I love video games. Okay, I love video games. It's just the, the, the thing is when we equate them to killing. I love okay. video games. I love King Quest Question. I love the some of the killing, the shooting. I love those games. It's just when we, let's say, mix them into the mold of killing, because they don't like us to say this, but it's kind of like they're meshing. And they're blaming kids and people that want to play video games. It's their fault, but it's not their fault. It's the armed forces that are confusing things because of the way they're using certain languages, certain words to get you to think differently about killing. Now, they don't say kill. You know what they say? The target is hot. The target is ready. Commence sequence. Hmm. Yeah. So they're using very specific words. I think that's actually a big thing, that uh, the language you use actually matters quite a bit. Like what in your example that you gave there, the target is present. It's in your mind, it's just, oh, that's the goal. Like, there's no nothing else, and you kind of disregard The target is there. The target is hot. Prepare sequence. They never use the word fire. Engage. Activate. Nothing with the word fire. Why, why do you think uh, they don't use fire, then? Well, think- because when I use the word fire, if you're holding a gun, and we've all yeah. held a gun, or if you held, yeah, like, yeah. you go skeet shooting, which I like to do, and I say fire to you, right? What happens when I say the word fire to you? A certain adrenaline builds up, right? And so when you know you're going to go skeet shooting and say, okay, I say fire, no big deal. But if hypothetically you are going to a target range, and even though these are not real people, but they look like real people, and I'm like, okay, Josh, commence sequence, now fire. And then you like freeze. Why? Because our psychological brain takes over and says, wait a minute, I'm killing someone. I got to think mm. about this. So they take away that whole thing by changing your language. Hmm. Reprogramming you is what I like to call it. That's interesting. They no. call it conditioning. I call it reprogramming you to do their task. I didn't know that. that... I didn't either uh, until I read the book. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. That You always learn something from reading a book. And I told him when he came on, I said, I apologize that it's taken me so long, like six months. I said, normally it does not take that long, but you have to understand – that book was hard. He says, you read the whole thing? I said, yes. And in chapter 22, he's like, you read the whole book? I said, I read every, just like, wow. I said, it was intense. He says, yeah. He's like, you read the, he's like, I can't believe you read the whole, I said, I told you I'd read the whole book. Because <laughs> I kept getting back and saying, hey, I need a little yeah, more time. Yeah. He's like, no problem. And it was not a thick, thick book, but it was just very tough. So getting back into, uh, so that was why I said the book. But so 
I create purposeful, meaningful content. So what's different about me in the media company that I also own is that my content doesn't directly sell. It educates you and makes you become more curious. Uh, one of my latest articles I wrote was Understanding RPA, Robotic Process Automation, and how using it to increase your profits. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in that article do I talk to you about us selling you RPA. I talk about a story about a local pizzeria that has been uh, made because they owned other local pizzerias and they decided because they couldn't get workers to automate using robotic process automation, and now they make thousands of pizzas. I went through a tour of that facility. In my, when I did my reels, I don't sell and say, hey, I do video stories. I say, hey, catch our full story. And by the way, ask us to capture your story so we can share it with the world. There so you. nothing asks for money. Um, and so even when I post social media, Josh, I never get banned. Hmm. The reason I don't get banned is I don't sell anything. My logo is very cutely placed at the bottom, very proportionally with the logo and the website. I've gotten banned two times. Oh, I'll wow. tell you why. Well, I'll tell you how and why, and it wasn't fair. I got banned not too long ago on LinkedIn because I was posting to a finance group. Now, people love my content. It wasn't selling. It was talking about banks, lots of stuff. I even went down and said, hey, banks are doing these things and – so I tell people the truth, whether they want to hear it or not. But they didn't like it because I was gaining traction in the group. Now, I wasn't asking for money. I wasn't doing anything wrong. But the head kingpin had an ego, and he decided, oh. well, I don't want this guy to get any further, so I'm just going to remove him from the group, and I'm going to block him. Okay, fine. So people have to read my content other places. On Facebook, I was posting in a local group that is just for my town, and you can only post business articles on Wednesday. So within a few days, my post was removed, told me that I violated this rule number six about posting business promotion on a non-business day. I reached out <laughs> to one of the admins, bless you, I reached out to one of the admins and I said, uh, my article wasn't selling anything. Why was I banned? John, I have no idea. Did you talk to them? I said, I did. Oh, it's probably such and such. I said, all right. I said, well, why? I don't know. I'll talk to him. So I then make a post. Hey, everyone, I know today is Wednesday, and I post valuable, meaningful, purposeful content. I never sell you anything. And okay. I want to let you know that this is going to be my last post in your group. It seems that one of your administrators, I won't mention who, um, has decided that my content violates the terms and conditions of your group. However, I have a question. Why is it if someone owns 30 or 40 cars, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Mercedes, they yeah. can post whatever day they want. But if I only own a couple cars, I can only post on Wednesday. See, I don't quite get the logic. I feel like people are being selective. Do you know what happened? What? That post was removed, and I was allowed access to the group again to post. <laughs> wow. So you, you came out on top. And my content doesn't sell. Uh, I had an issue with a landlord one time, and he was being a little nasty. So I did a reel and say, hey, guys, it's all about doing for others, right? And so I said, now, I'm not going to mention whether you're a realtor, whether you're a landlord that owns one building, maybe in this town, other towns, or hundreds of shopping centers, or even residential uh, dwelling units. doesn't matter. Or maybe you're just a business owner. At the end of the day, we need to do what's best. However, some people that have a little more money, or that think they have a little money, or mm -hmm. that want that ego to be in control, think it's okay to sick attorneys on you, uh, try to place false lawsuits against you, because they believe they're this powerhouse. At the end of the day, we all know that they could get their way, but I can always have the last laugh because I can always get ahead. Mm -hmm. And that day, I got a call from my landlord saying, what did you post? I said, I didn't mention your name or anybody. Did I just talk in generalities? Where did I mention your name? You yeah. didn't. I said, well, you must have a guilty conscience then. Maybe you should re-examine <laughs> it. There you go. I got a letter from their attorney telling me I was harassing them. Wow. That's so ridiculous. So people 
are a little nuts. So I just pride myself in creating purposeful content. Uh, my team of graphic designers, and I still put things together. Like uh, I do something uh, where I feature the blogs again, like as a repost, repurpose. But what I also do is I've started something for Orbital Media called Orbital Media Tips. So today um, we created something that will post tomorrow about base color. Do you know that the base color is the first or primary color that's used that all the printer co uh, colors are printed on? I said, ask us to tell you more. So I share a topic that'll get you engaged or asking more questions. There you go. No, I think that's important too, uh, to hook your audience and try and say, all right, this is something I'm passionate about and I want to share with you. It's up to you to decide if you want to learn more about this. And I, I like Absolutely. that's what I like about you is that you kind of uh, invite this uh, curiosity rather than just uh, selling them like oh I I, this, I don't th sell that. Josh I just wanna I just wanna educate people about different things and then I do that as I told you I had a one on one with somebody I said hey look I had an amazing one on one with this guy from Florida today. And I just want to post his ask, if that's okay with you guys. He's looking for Uber and Lyft drivers that are only making $4 an hour. Reach out to him so you can uh, maybe get a better income. So those are the kinds of things I do. And usually when you position something like that, you're not selling. I'm not selling my own stuff. I'm not getting any money from it. I'm just trying to help someone else. So I think when we try to connect and we try to serve and we ask others, you know, you've been on one-on-ones before, and it's always like, mm. you know, I do this, I do this, I do that. Okay, and I sell yeah. this. And then you have to kind of like be like, okay, you know, this is going where it's like, well, that's interesting. Um, well, let me tell you what I do. Well, you know, we're out of time. Well, I didn't get – well, you, you can take two minutes. Like they don't balance the time even. It's like, well, let me just tell you my ask. My ask today is if you know anybody – well, I don't. Okay, well, listen, it was great talking with you. Okay. And you know that go that's going nowhere. Like, that's just going to go nowhere. We have those, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so I always tell people uh, an A lesson I want to share with you. Um, you know, um, no one has the right to make you feel inferior about yourself. And I have a real, except for you, and I have a really great lesson. There was a, uh, an elected official in office. I won't tell you who, but he was in town, and he was in office uh, a couple of years ago. And I'm also president of my local chamber of commerce. And... Mm -hmm. uh, he asked me, he asked me to come into his office and I knew that he wasn't for a good thing. He asked me to come into his office and I came into his office and I didn't make him, I made him wait. Like I wasn't rushing down to go see him. I said, I can see yeah. you. I can see you um, basically Friday at 430, which is not a great time. People want to get out. Or I could see you next Monday at nine o'clock and today's Tuesday. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I guess we'll meet you at Friday at four thirty. He was desperate to see me. So okay. So yeah, take. So yeah, I come yeah. in there. I see him. He goes, you know, John. He goes, when are you gonna give up? Excuse me. And I said, um, he said, you know, um, you know that thing you did, the the thing about the town shopping together. I said, yeah, it was great work. He said it was very good work. By the way, I just want to let you know, you're we're launching it and you're not. <laughs> I said. So he's oh, just gonna take your work there. Okay. I said. No problem. And, you know, John, when are you just going to give up? Like, when are you going to realize that we don't need a chamber here? We're a high-end town, and we just don't use chambers. Hmm. So I sat back in his chair. And um, I looked at him, and I said, uh, he goes, when are you going to give up? And he goes, what are you doing? I said, you know, sir, I don't want to lie to you. I just want to give myself a moment to give you the exact day, hour, minute, and second. Then I'm officially going to give up. Could you just give me a minute? So, okay. <laughs> I opened my eyes. He's like, sir, I'm going to give up. He's like, ready. When a little baby boy or a little baby girl, he's like, what? tells their parents they don't want to walk anymore. So never. <laughs> and he's like, uh, huh? And I said, let me ask you a question. I said, you have two kids, right? You have a boy and a girl, a boy that's just entering college and mm -hmm. a, a daughter that's just graduating. I think it just graduated last year. He said, yeah. Let me ask you another question. Do they both walk? Hmm. He said, yes. I said, when did they ever tell you after they were born that they didn't want to learn to walk? Never. He just, well, he just kept sitting back and forth and you never talk. But yeah, the person that talks first loses. So I said to him, uh, he goes, um, 
scratch his head for a couple minutes. Uh, never. I see you know, sir. I always knew the first moment I met you that you were a very bright and intelligent man and that you would answer that question precisely correctly the first time I asked it. And that is, sir, when I'm going to give up. Never. Do you know what he said to me, Josh? What? He said to me, John, I won't use the exact verbiage because it's not proper. You get the blank out of my office. Okay. Yeah. That's basically what he said. You're arrogant. Now get the blank out of my office. I said, sir, I said, I want to thank you so much for this invitation today. And I want to let you know something. I asked for your help today. You know, I never really needed it, but I was here with an olive branch. I'll continue to do what I do and I'll continue to be cordial around you in public. But let's maintain that social distance. Okay. Because you'll be in office for a little while and then you'll be leaving and I will still be in power. There you go. And guess wow. what happened? A year or two later, people wore him down, and my best friend got in, and he got oh, out. Oh, nice. So I think the biggest thing that I want to say from that is, you know what, uh, Josh? You have to, whether you're an entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, any person that's living, you have to not be afraid to bring your A game. Because if you don't bring your A game, somebody else will. That's in business. That's in personal life. A lot of people say, oh, John, don't do that. Don't do that. Why? Well, because why? Because I might get ahead of you because why? Yeah. And I think that's a big problem people have. They're afraid that they're going to be too good. Nothing wrong with that. I always say you can be good. Just don't be arrogant. Always be yeah. humble and be grateful for who you are, for what you have. That is the most important thing I can share with you. In my pocket, I have it right here, is a green rock. You guys can probably see this rock. Let me see nice. Okay. So this rock uh, is actually my gratitude rock. So I got this rock several years ago. I bought it at a crystal shop. You can get yours anywhere. Don't go outside oh, and get nice. a rock because it'll be uh, sharp. It might you know, hurt you, rip clothing. So I bought this rock, I don't know, six, seven, eight dollars at a crystal shop. It's smooth, it's green, like earth color. And what I do every morning and every night is I hold this rock in my hand. And I say, you know, whether it's create or whatever you believe in, um, I am so happy and grateful that I'm alive today. I'm so happy and grateful for the abundance in my life. I'm so happy and grateful for the people I'm gonna get to connect to today. I'm so happy and grateful for the breakfast I'm going to have. I'm so happy and grateful for the weather that's going to be perfect with a breeze. I'm so happy and grateful for my parents, my car. And I just go on and on. And so you build up that energy. And then you know what I do? I put it in my pants at the shorts at the end of the day. I pick it up again before I go to bed. And I do the same exact process. So it's not me just saying these things. Yeah. It's me feeling them in our heart. Because saying them doesn't mean anything, right? We have to feel them. When we feel them, that's truly when we are at the frequency of gratitude. And other people can see this. Yeah. No, I agree. And I think there's a difference between, uh, and this is something I've come to realize too, is there's a difference between confidence and arrogance first off. Yes. And that's, I mean, just that, but... Even just developing con confidence to begin with, uh, I like to say first you have to have courage because you're going to suck at yes. something when you first do it. <laughs> you have to have the courage to even try in the first place. And then as you get better at it, as other people start saying, hey, you know, you actually got quite a talent for this. That's when you start to develop competence. You're like, all right, you, you actually are the guy we need to go to. Yep. And then after that is you yourself feeling, hey. I'm actually pretty good at it. Same thing That's happens, Josh, in anything, whether you're trying to be a, an expert or I'm trying to help someone else become an expert. Like when I started my blog, I had zero followers. Now, I didn't do the traditional way. Like most people say, oh, gee, you know, pay per click. No, don't do that. So I decided that when I started this blog, I wasn't going to never going to spend one penny on it. Not because I was cheap, but because I wanted to attract people that get value from my content. That's important. Too, it's very important. Now, I think I'm up to 720. I think the goal by the end of the year, we're trying to reach somewhere like 800 or 1,000. And I think when you reach that number, then you get more significance. But people keep seeing that your number grows. 
depending on the topic of what you do, it attracts more people. I'll tell you this, nobody unsubscribes. They all love the content. Some people subscribe to my motivational newsletter, which is about uh, marketing, advertising, like the one I just did the other day was uh, how to push the envelope further. Uh, one that's coming mm -hmm. out this week is in order to reach way high, you have to dig down deep. And so that's my whole topic for this week is some people are afraid to dig down deep. They don't want to get on their hands and knees. They don't want to get their hands dirty. They don't want to start at the bottom. And that's what you have to do in order to be successful. Absolutely. And, and so, pe people know that, that they all want that short trick, right? They all want that short trick. And if you can yeah. just do it, even with being on the radio, Josh, it takes time. I've been on the radio for a while. You don't build your credibility by just going on once or twice. You've got to be on there for months. People say, okay, this person means this stuff. This person really walks the talk. The last thing I want to share with you is this. I had a guy on social media. Uh, it was actually, I think it was on LinkedIn. And I was not sure what my next week's topic was going to be. And he said to me, I had a great post on AI. I think it was cows, farmers turning to AI to milk their cows. Definitely check it out. Well, anyway, uh, this guy uh, started posting that, you know, we're looking for these kind of people. We're looking for web designers. We're looking for this. We're looking for salespeople. And he puts all this stuff down. So I'm like, okay, he probably just doesn't know any better. Another article comes out. Another AI article. He does the same crap. And I'm like, what? I said, I got to check who this guy is. I got to see why is he doing this? I click on his mm -hmm. name. He's vice president of a marketing and advertising company. That's a big umbrella of a major public trading company. I said, shame on this guy. But I'm not going to call him out because that would be low and that would be passive aggressive. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm yeah. going to educate others. Hey, guys. John C. Morley here, Serial Entrepreneur. My master topic was inspired from somebody that actually did something you shouldn't be doing, understanding social etiquette and how to use it properly. And one of my shows, I went back a whole week, I was like, so I want to tell you what you shouldn't be doing. So you shouldn't actually be posting content about hiring on a blog that's talking about AI, unless maybe it was about an AI type of hiring system. Even that's a stretch. So mm -hmm. I did that. And you know what happened the next week or two? He stopped and stopped following, but he stopped posting comments to my stuff that was unrelated to it. So he was trying to just do that. And then I said this, I said, you know, I wish I could get these, some of these people's heads. Why do they do these things? Now, I'm not going to mention the guy, but I'm going to let you guys know it's been four days. And I do want to thank the guy for at least curbing his behavior. I was kind of surprised being a member of a publicly traded company that they would do that. And again, anybody else would have called him out, but that's not the proper thing to do because I want to educate him so other people don't do the same thing. And they just were like yeah. blown away. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good that you did that. So, man, yeah, I hate to wrap this up. And where can people find you <clears throat> on social media if they want to like follow these blogs? Sure, so they you know, can go like to, just like my hat says... Believe me, achieve dot com. That's B E L I E V E me, M E achieve, A C H I E V E dot com. I would encourage you to check out the 11th. I think it's the 11th right now. It says John C. Morley's recent articles. Every week I publish two articles one's a tech and mm -hmm. one's a marketing uh, and just a self improvement article. I also have things like Science Fridays with John, Super Motivational Friday. Jason Academy Monday coaching. Um, I do master classes, some free, some paid. There is just so much content on there, and I can give you the water. I can't make you drink it. So I think if we all understand that in life, if we're not learning, we're dying. So let's keep putting good quality information, just like you don't want to put bad stuff in your body. I told you all I drink is water most of the time. Yeah. Our water, you need to make sure you're putting in a good mental diet because what we drink, what we eat, and the energy and the thoughts we put in are going to change where we are be tomorrow. We are today what we thought yesterday. We'll be tomorrow and the days forward what we're thinking today. So let's start changing what we put into our motivational tank today. Exactly. I love that. Well, thank you for coming on today, John. I appreciate you taking the time and you shared so much knowledge here that I think people are going to 
benefit from that. So thank you. Well, Josh, it was a privilege, a pleasure, and honor to be on your show. And uh, I hope people uh, definitely do gain value. And I hope that they learn the biggest lesson is that we need to provide value to others, regardless of what we do. And so much will come back to us. Agreed. Agreed. So everyone, as you can tell, that is John C. Morley. He's a very intelligent person, has great things to share. I challenge you guys, if anything spoke to you, to go and check out his pages. I'm sure he would appreciate that. Stay tuned till next week. We have a great guest lined up for you guys. Hey everyone, if you liked this episode and would like to hear more, be sure to hit that subscribe or follow button. We release a new episode every Wednesday for you guys to listen to. Thank you guys so much for the support that you give. We could not have done this without you guys. If you would like to be a potential guest on the show, check out intelligentconvos.com and fill out the form there. Thank you guys again, and let's get after it.